But we begin our report with the longest prison sentence yet in the January 6th assault on the Capitol. Stuart Rhodes was sentenced to 18 years for seditious conspiracy. He's the founder of the far-right militia group known as the Oath Keepers. Prosecutors say he orchestrated a violent attempt to stop the peaceful transfer of power. Scott McFarlane has more details from inside the courtroom. Stuart Rhodes is a Yale Law grad, a former service member and founder of the Oath Keepers, who was convicted of conspiring to mobilize his own fighting force at the Capitol January 6th, planning weeks in advance to raise money, prepare gear, and to ready a team if then-President Trump invoked the Insurrection Act, which Rhodes urged in a letter to Trump. Rhodes, who lost an eye in a firearms incident years ago, was also accused of leading a plot to stage guns as near the Capitol as possible January 6th. Federal Judge Amit Mehta called Rhodes an ongoing threat to America and handed down a sentence that will keep Rhodes imprisoned until nearly 2040. It's not only the longest sentence by a good amount, but it was backed up by the court saying, you, sir, present a threat to the fabric of democracy. Rhodes argued at sentencing that he's a political prisoner, that he and other Trump supporters are being targeted by a regime, and he claimed the Oath Keepers were quiet professionals January 6th. In your opinion, this may have been targeted for the prospect of a future pardon? Yes, that's the only practical sense I can make of it. Now it's possible, of course, he really believes it and, and that he's completely deluded. Judge Mehta warned Rhodes is undermining democracy and said we all now hold our collective breaths with an election approaching. Will we have another January 6th? That remains to be seen. In court, it was revealed Rhodes continues to rile his followers in jailhouse calls. Is he going to continue trying to galvanize people around the country politically? Only Rhodes can. Scott McFarland joins me now. Uh, Scott, tell us a little bit about what the atmosphere was like inside that courtroom. I've sat through a couple hundred of these hearings, John. Never seen or felt a moment like this before. It's like back in school when you're in the lunchroom or the classroom and it goes completely silent. You know something serious is about to happen or about to be said. That was one of those moments today when the judge said, not only is Stuart Rhodes not a political prisoner, but that there is this palpable fear about a recurrence of January 6th, that the nation's holding its collective breath about what happens in 2024. It just landed in a certain way in the room. And I can tell you, it was the same in the courtroom itself where the parties were sitting because the defense lawyers said they'd never been in a room that fell that silent and that still. And I'll add this footnote, John. I don't think it's trivial. One of the other judges in the courthouse who's handled a bunch of these cases came to sit in to listen to what Judge Amit Mehta said to Stuart Rhodes, an indication this was a top-line case that had garnered the interest of the entire courthouse. And Scott, why did the judge and others who've heard January 6 cases focus so much on whether Rhodes showed remorse for his actions, which is distinct from showing remorse about getting caught for those actions? We've heard judges, especially in these January 6 cases, emphasize their concern when they think a defendant is only showing remorse for how the crime impacted the defendant, when they don't reference the injured police officers, those who died January 6, the impact on democracy. In this case, it was a little different. Stuart Rhodes was unapologetic altogether. He began his remarks saying, I'm a political prisoner. The judge responded sternly saying, no, you're not, and that this this is an indication of the risk that remains, that Rhodes is still through jailhouse phone calls galvanizing his supporters at a tenuous time. And this is clearly a marquee case in all of the Department of Justice cases. How might it be connected to those other January 6th cases and investigations? This really was a first of its kind case, if you think about it. This is the first seditious conspiracy defendant to, to be sentenced for January 6th, but there are several more to come. Four more Oath Keepers and four Proud Boys, all convicted of seditious conspiracy, all facing their sentencing hearings in the coming days, weeks, and months. This 18-year sentence for Stuart Rhodes might be the high water mark, but it sure does lay a foundation for those defendants still to come. And I'll add this because it's worth emphasizing. There are hundreds more arrests still expected, even two years later, not to mention whatever becomes of Jack Smith's special counsel investigation. Indeed. Scott McFarlane in Washington. Thank you, Scott.